As of now, we've spoken about two types of fields, gravitational fields and electric fields. In this lecture, I will give a brief introduction to a third type of field known as the magnetic field. Now, before we get into the specifics of our magnetic field, let's recall what the word field means. Now, physicists and scientists created this man-made concept of a field to explain how force can act over distance. For example, when we spoke about gravitational field, we said that any mass, say mass 1, will be pulled by another mass, mass 2, say mass 2 is our Earth. And that's exactly why, when I let go of my marker, it drops to the ground, because some invisible force acts on this marker over a distance, right? Because the marker and my second mass, the Earth, don't actually touch. So some invisible force is pulling on this marker. And this invisible force is described by the gravitational field. Now, in the same way, when we spoke about electric fields, we said that charge, say a negative charge, and a positive charge will attract. They will be pulled towards each other by an invisible force known as the Coulomb force, or given by Coulomb's law. And this electric field concept was created to explain how this invisible force can act over distance. Now, in the same way, we can talk about magnetic fields. Except now we're not talking about mass and we're not talking about charge. Now we're talking about things called magnets. Now magnets or permanent magnets are objects that have an innate ability to produce magnetic fields in the same way that say positive charge and negative charge have innate ability to produce electric fields and any mass has an innate ability to produce our gravitational fields. Magnets also have an innate ability to produce our magnetic fields. Now, in the same way that we use gravitational field lines and electric field lines to show or portray our gravitational field and electric field, we can use something called magnetic field lines to represent how a magnetic field looks like. So let's look at the following magnet. Note that any magnet that ever existed or will exist always has a North Pole and a South Pole. So if we look at our magnet, we have a North Pole and a South Pole. Now if we cut this magnet in half, you won't separate the North Poles and South Poles. If you cut this in half, one side will become a North Pole, the second side will become a South Pole. So if you cut this guy in half, this section will be a North South Pole, and if you cut this in half, this section will become the North Pole. So anytime you cut a magnet or you create a magnet, it will develop a North Pole and a South Pole. Now, so the way you represent magnetic field lines is the following manner. They begin, always begin on our North Pole and will always end on our South Pole. So they begin here and go around to our South Pole. Begin here and go around to our South Pole and so on. Notice that we also have magnetic field lines inside our magnet, actually inside that magnet going like so. Now two important things you must know about these magnetic field lines. Magnetic field or our magnetic field is tangent to these magnetic field lines. And number two, the number of lines per area signifies our strength. In other words, the more concentrated the more together our field lines are, the stronger our field is. And we saw the same exact idea when we spoke about gravitational field lines and electric field lines. So, just like certain subatomic elementary particles have an innate ability or property to produce electric fields, certain atoms also have an innate ability to produce magnetic fields. The only difference is the following. These subatomic particles, such as electrons and protons, are always activated. In other words, they will always produce electric fields no matter what. However, these magnetic atoms could or could not produce magnetic fields. In other words, they must first be activated to become a magnet. So these atoms are known as ferromagnetic atoms or ferromagnetic materials. 
and examples include iron. So iron, for example, has an innate ability to produce magnetic fields, but by itself, it will not produce a magnetic field. It will begin producing a magnetic field and it will become activated when another magnetic field comes close to it, when that atom is placed in the field of another magnet. Now, in the same way that two protons or two electrons will repel each other when placed next to each other because of an electric field, two magnets when placed next to each other so that the north poles or south poles are facing each other will repel each other because of a magnetic field. And likewise, in the same way that an electron and a proton when placed next to each other will attract because of an electric field, two magnets one place next to each other so that the North Pole and South Pole are facing each other will attract each other because of a magnetic field. Now you might imagine that there is some relationship between magnetic fields and electric fields. And in fact there is. Now these guys are not the same thing but a relationship does exist. And in the next lecture we will explore what this relationship between magnetic fields and electric fields is.